Hey guys, back in the shop here working on uh, the laser today. So this is one of those laser videos out of the all the videos that I have there. So if you're here for something else, sorry, but you might learn something anyway. It is November and uh, November to me means one thing when it comes to the laser and what we're doing, and that is uh, Christmas ornaments. So uh, these guys, I have a real fondness for Christmas ornaments. I, when I picked up my uh, this X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt, and I picked that up on a Black Friday sale, I think it's been like three years ago now. And so it was like mid-November when I got it, mid to late November. In that time between mid, late November uh, to Christmas day, I had paid for about 90% of my X-Tool with Christmas ornaments. They're really simple, uh, they go quick, and uh, people really like them. So uh, I don't have a regular like venue that I display stuff at. I sold these on Facebook Marketplace. I put up a, a few ads with uh, on Facebook Marketplace with uh, different ornaments, and uh, the way it worked would people would message me that they wanted one. I'd ask them the details because these are personalized. You can see there's a name on there. Uh, they're personalized, uh, so I'd get their name, what they wanted, which ornament they wanted, and uh, then I would send them a graphic image. I'll show you how to do that in Lightburn. And they'd approve it, I'd get paid, and then I'd make the ornament and deliver it. So, uh, so a lot of times if it was local people, I'm in a small community, uh, I would just make it and get paid when I delivered. But uh, the point is, is, is uh, I sold a lot of them and I was really amazed at how all that went. So I love this time of year if you're gonna be doing this to make money. Now, if you're not using your laser to make money, that's great. About probably 60% of what I do on here, I don't actually sell. Uh, but uh, these are great for Christmas. They're great Christmas gifts. So uh, I do a lot of these for my family too. So uh, so here's some tips. I want to give you some tips in Lightburn uh, as well as in uh, with the laser itself and some of the Michelle's and some things to think about. So that first year I just did a single layer uh, ornament and uh, I think I was selling them for like eight bucks or something like that. They didn't take long to make at all. Uh, you work on some processes that make it a little faster. Uh, this year I'm doing uh, mainly two layer ornaments. So you see this is actually two layers. And uh, then I just glue those together. I just use a, uh, just a regular white glue, uh, wood glue. And uh, that back section is stained. Front section is not, stands out really nice. And uh, I just use a regular white glue instead of a wood glue, uh, or you know, like a tight bond two or something. Uh, and that's because that, that regular white glue, it clears really dry and it's inexpensive and it sets up quick. Uh, and then I'll, I'll give it a fuff of uh, lacquer spray paint to protect it. Uh, these ones with the bigger hole, I use a ribbon to tie through. If it's a smaller hole, I use one of these things. You can buy them on Amazon and it's just a, a quick connect kind of a thing. So this is, uh, this is, this and a couple other designs are gonna be my main design. So I only offer about half a dozen designs. Uh, it keeps it simple. Uh, and you know, I found something through my years in retail and stuff. If you have a ton of choices, you know, if I had 50 different ornaments, people take forever to decide. And a lot of times they just don't decide and move on to something else. So each year I do a different design and you'll notice something else here. Uh, there's the year on there. Now, uh, that's optional, but I really almost do it. If they, if they don't ask whether it's optional, I go ahead and do it. And that's for a simple reason, and uh, call me a capitalist pig if you must. But <laughs> uh, these are really popular with like grandmas and stuff, you know, and moms uh, to get for their kids, you know. And so the kids got their own ornament, but it's got the year on it. So next year they're putting up the tree. Oh, I, I got a 2024 ornament. Now I need a 2025 one. So I do a different design with their name, and the deal and it becomes it does become kind of cool for the kids you know when they get to be my age and they're pulling out these ornaments that they've carted around since they were kids and here's you know six or eight different years of ornaments that their mom or grandma bought for them uh, that have all those years and, and it, is, it is a nice memory keepsake kind of a thing as well so uh, but it keeps the customer coming back to me because I can always make a new one with this year's uh, uh, engraved on there. So, so that's why the year's on there. Uh, so let's go. I'm going to start up the old computer here for Lightburn, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get to do some of that fancy editing where I put the Lightburn screen up here for you so you can see what I'm doing, and uh, we'll go there. Okay, so now we're in Lightburn here. Uh, so we're going to just start my screen recording. Uh, so here you go. 
we can see this is going on here. I've got my ornaments laid out. And one of the first things you'll notice, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. As you notice, I've got a tool line. That's a 12 by 12 square. I've been buying this really nice birch ply I found and it's in 12 by 12 squares. So I just put that tool line out there so I can lay out my ornaments and uh, you know I can know exactly where they're at and I can get nine ornaments to a sheet. Uh, now to do that, I do have to tilt some of these. Uh, you can see because otherwise they'd be too tall if I did them all just vertical like this. Uh, so I tilt a few of those about 40 degrees and I can fit them all on there. Uh, so that's nine really efficient use of materials. So let's look and see what happens uh, when I go ahead and preview this. So I've got, uh, let's go ahead and play. I've got my cut going on here and you can see it's cutting the inside shapes first. That's good. Uh, and I'm gonna, just gonna grab this and kind of fast forward. Let's go up here. And then it starts cutting the outside shapes. And finally we do the engraving. So that's a fill there. And you can see what it's doing. I've got a lot of white space going on as it skips between the ornaments. And that total engrave time is about 40 and a half minutes, about 41 minutes. And I'm just gonna hit okay. So let's see if we can improve that. Now there's a couple things we can do. Uh, number one, I wanna change that order. And the reason for that is a lot of times when you, when you cut out a piece from a big flat, it'll shift a little bit. It'll drop down uh, just a little bit. It'll usually drop down and sometimes it can even shift a little. If it does that before it engraves, then this engraving can be misaligned. And so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my order. I'm gonna move that fill up above my cut layer. So now it's gonna do the fill first. So there you go. You see it's doing the engraving first and then it's gonna go around and start cutting stuff. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And uh, so that's one thing. Now we were at 41 minutes. Now here's kind of an interesting thing. A lot of people wonder what is offset fill. So uh, offset fill, it's basically going to uh, do this as a little line around there rather than going back and forth and back and forth and, and engraving that. Actually, it's gonna go vertical if I have it set that way. It's gonna do a line around the outside. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna change this to offset fill. And first off, we were at 41 minutes roughly. Now let's see how fast that is. Okay, 34 minutes, okay. And you can see what it's doing rather than skipping back and forth to do the engraving, it's doing the entire 2024 all at one time. Then it goes to the cut. So I just saved six minutes off of my uh, production time. And, and you know, as the old saying goes, time is money. So let's click okay there. So that's something I can do. Now let's see if we can maybe make this make a little more sense. Uh, let's see what happens if I go to the laser setting and I go to the optimization settings. So here we can have it order things by layer, order by priority. Uh, you can set things like cut the inner shapes first, which is always a good idea because that's gonna mean things move less as they're cutting. Uh, I always, most of this stuff I always, uh, you know, have this stuff going here. If I'm cutting a bunch of squares where I can line up the sides, I'll do that remove overlapping lines and that, that way it only cuts once instead of several times. But let's see what happens if we add group in here to this uh, uh, priority layer. And I'm just gonna hit okay. And that yeah, didn't really change my, my time at all. But let's uh, see what happens. It's gonna engrave and then it's gonna cut, but I believe it's gonna cut the whole ornament because I have each of those ornaments as, as an individual group. Yeah, so it's, but it didn't really change my time any. Now let's see, I'm just curious what happens. I always mess around with these optimization settings. So I'm gonna remove the layer and now it's gonna do priority and then group. And let's see what that looks like. Let's go over there. All right, we got it down to 34 minutes. So that's a, uh, what is that? That's about a, was that, was that where I was? I think that might be where I was, wasn't it? About six minutes. And we're gonna, so now we're gonna do the entire ornament one at a time is what it's doing there. Uh, oh, but you know what? Yep, there we go. Now in this case, it actually cut out that center before it engraved and then it cuts out the exterior. So that's good. We're not gonna have that drop issue. So again, cutting out the center, then we're engraving, then we're cutting out the outside. So that's still gonna line up. 
3425, I'm gonna hit okay. Let's look at that again. If I put that layer back in there, hit okay. And preview. Yeah, it's about the same. So that really doesn't make any difference. So we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, I do kind of like cutting out one ornament at a time because uh, that did save us a couple minutes. I'm gonna hit okay. So that looks like it's gonna do exactly what I want to do. So now I can lay this out and I can uh, cut them out. So uh, I'm not gonna bore you by showing you that cutting out. And then I've got my other layer here. What I can do, the nice thing about this having the uh, ear on the front layer there is I can have a bunch of those cut out and ready to go. And we're just ready to go. Now all I need to do is cut the backs and those are very simple. You can see those sitting off to the side here and I can just lay those out. Now <laughs> for my Facebook, ads, I need a bunch of these pre-made, right? Because I got to take pictures and put them up there. Uh, fortunately, my grandkids are not on Facebook. <laughs> so, so these will actually be the ones that I give to my grandkids. Uh, Ethan and Miles is on the screen there. So, uh, so that's how I, how I handle that. So those will be the ones in the ads. The parents will know what they're getting because they're, they're on Facebook, but uh, the kids won't know. And uh, usually I give these at like uh, Thanksgiving, you know, that way they've got them for this year's tree and it's not uh, necessarily part of Christmas. So uh, a couple other ornaments that I do, sorry, I just kicked the old tripod there. This one is also a really good seller. Uh, and this is a memorial uh, ornament there. So uh, it's a two layer, and then I use that burgundy stain on the top layer. And uh, it's, it's a nice piece for people to remember, people that have passed on that aren't gonna be with them at Christmas time this year. And uh, so these are, uh, I do charge a little bit more for these because there is quite a bit of cut time with all this intricate uh, area there and it's a lot larger so I do charge more for these now don't if you do something like this don't limit your marketing uh, I just did another one I don't have it here uh, for a customer who had lost their favorite dog that they'd had for for you know several several years and I changed out that little heart up there I changed that out for a puppy dog paw so uh, these these are a great seller as well so uh, there you go so some tips and tricks on ornaments, things that will really help you out. Uh, always think of that production time and also think about the order of things so that you don't have misaligned printing. Um, so uh, Christmas ornaments are great. They're a good money maker if you're making them for money. They're a great gift if you're not doing it for money. Uh, we'll have some other videos coming up. Uh, been doing a little bit of, this is pretty crude, uh, wood carved signs. So I'll do, and this one's combining the uh, uh, router carving with layer at the bottom and uh, uh, this is still rough and a learning process once i get some uh, things down i'll probably do a video on that in the future too that's that's been a fun uh, thing to learn with so always be creating the more you create the easier it is to create so i really encourage you to do that it's great for your mental health and uh, you always have something to give away and talk about so uh, there you go until next time be well do good work and i'll see you down the road